your wedding day health and beauty timeline. That's coming up next on the Wedding Planning Podcast. Hey there, it's Cara, and I believe that every engaged couple should enjoy the expertise of a down-to-earth, honest, and professional wedding planner. Join me each week for straightforward wedding planning advice designed to streamline and simplify your wedding plans. To learn more about taking the expense and overwhelm out of your wedding plans, visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash vault. That's V-A-U-L-T. Enjoy the show. Why, hello there, friend, and thank you so much, as always, for joining me here today to talk all about your wedding. I hope the plans are coming along great. I hope you're enjoying a great week so far. I'm always really, really curious to know what's on your mind, what questions you have as you're out there in the trenches of planning your weddings. So I was blown away when I asked for your future show topic requests and any ideas for new episodes. I was blown away by your response to those over the past couple of weeks. There were some clear winners and some very obvious front runners, and I can assure you that I have all of those topics on my list for shows in the very near future. Some of them are wedding dress shopping and alterations, side hustles or ways that you can earn extra money for the wedding, gift registry, reception entertainment ideas, reception money saving ideas, insurance and permits, just to name a few. Also at the top of your new episode request list was requests for wedding timelines. Now there are a million directions we could take a conversation on wedding timelines, but for today's show, we're going to focus on outlining a wedding health and beauty timeline, starting in the months before your engagement and extending all the way through to a really detailed sequence of events for the weeks and days before your wedding, right up to the actual day of. And let me say here, it's never too late to jump in on the new show requests conversation. So if you are brand new to the show and you're just joining us, all you need to do to participate is hop on Instagram, follow Wedding Planning Podcast, all one word, and shoot me a DM with your future show topic requests or questions. And if you've been listening and you've been around for a while, you know that my door is wide open and you're welcome to be in touch anytime. So if you're new here, if you're just newly engaged, congratulations, welcome, and I definitely look forward to hearing from you and hearing about what's on your mind as you're planning your wedding. And with that, let's dive into your wedding health and beauty timeline. For a full blog post on today's show, complete with lots of links that I'll be referring to throughout the episode, you can visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash beauty. I'm going to open today's show by getting us on the same page about what I mean when I say health and beauty. I wholeheartedly, 1000% embrace all shapes, colors, sizes, and unique expressions of what makes you, you. When I refer to health throughout today's show, I am not talking about diet plans or weight loss. By health, I mean objective, medical standards of healthy living. So for example, getting enough sleep, drinking lots of water, regular physical exercise, mental wellness, eating fresh foods when possible, things like that. So to clarify, we are not talking about losing weight for the wedding. I come at this show through the lens of someone who tries my best to live a healthy lifestyle, but I am by zero means perfect. And there's always room for improvement. Trust me. I drink way too much wine. I love sugar. I could take much better care of my skin. I get overly stressed out and mentally frazzled just like anyone else. 
The goal of our conversation today from a health standpoint is simply for you to feel your best on your wedding day. No one wants to get to the finish line with sleep deprivation, dehydration, and months and months of eating fast food and junk out of pure stress and lack of time. That's totally preventable. So let's work out a plan for you to wake up every day in the months to come feeling your best culminating on your wedding day with you fresh, glowing, and bursting with energy. And next up, turning to beauty, let's get on the same page there. Again, I am not advocating any specific definition of beauty. It's not my intention to objectify anyone or judge anyone based on what you do or don't plan to do or wear on your wedding day. So there will be listeners for whom hair, makeup, microblading eyebrows, fake eyelashes, (laughs) and facials are completely non-applicable, and I fully respect and understand that. Okay, so now that we're on the same page, let's get started with a 12-month wedding health and beauty timeline. That's a totally arbitrary time length, I know, but I had to choose something. So if you're engaged for 18 months or you're engaged for six months, just make adjustments accordingly. To start off, I'm going to use a pretty big general time chunk. So I'm going to say from four months all the way to 12 months plus before your wedding, this is the ideal time to focus on general health as I defined it just a minute ago. So sleeping for seven to nine hours each night, everyone has a very different specific need for that, but in general, seven to nine hours each night, drinking plenty of water throughout the day, eating fresh, healthy foods whenever possible. And this is also a great time to work in regular exercise. A few of my personal favorites are running and yoga. I also have a gym membership that I take advantage of weekly, but I'll focus on running, walking, and yoga because they can be done at home or close to home, and they are totally free. Yoga became a regular habit for me after I had my children, so about seven plus or minus years ago, and I love it. I cannot function without multiple yoga sessions each week. You can find literally thousands of free yoga workouts online if you do a Google search or look around on YouTube. Squeezing in a walk after lunch or dinner is a very easy way to get regular exercise and make that a part of your regular habit. If you're into running, and by run, I mean jog, really. (laughs) We're not not suggesting that anyone is going to go out sprinting for miles and miles. But if you're interested in this, then starting a jogging routine is another great way to stay in shape. It is free. And in many cases, it can be done right in your own neighborhood. It does not require you to get in the car, drive to a gym, pay a gym membership, I personally used to absolutely despise jogging, and that was before I met my husband, John. It is a lifetime habit for him, and it totally wore off on me. So flash forward to today, I run about 5 to 10 miles a week. That is definitely not something that happened overnight. So start slow and just make it a gradual habit. The key is that it's a habit and it becomes a part of your daily and weekly routine. If running or jogging sounds too intense or is just not your thing, I totally get it. Find something you enjoy and use the time spent working out to totally zone out take advantage of that time to let go of any stress you've been hanging on to throughout your day or your week. Physical exercise is totally addictive in the best way. It boosts your energy. It keeps your body free of toxins. It keeps your spirits high. 
I will share a couple of my habits and favorite routines and workouts in an Instagram live this week. And I'll post that to IGTV and it'll be available for you there to view it if you want more information. And you can also visit the blog post for today's show to view that recap at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash beauty. Next item, moving on from physical exercise, about 12 months in advance of your wedding is the perfect time to consider teeth straightening. I invested in clear aligners last year and it was one of the best investments ever. I went back and forth over it for years because it is a little bit on the pricey side, relatively speaking. But again, if you've been on the fence about straightening your teeth, then the year leading up to your wedding might be the perfect excuse and the perfect little push that you need. So talk to your dentist. You may be able to take advantage of interest-free financing, and your dental insurance might even cover a portion of the expense, which is a huge bonus. Investing in a straighter smile has given me a ton of confidence, and this is something that will last for years if not decades to come if you maintain it properly. So I highly recommend that if it's something that you've ever considered. And next on our long-term timeline for beauty and health is a skincare routine. So I'd suggest seeing a dermatologist if you want some professional advice on a plan to target acne, discoloration, any fine lines and wrinkles, or any other skin condition that concerns you. If professional skincare regimens are not for you because of budget or time investment or just general disinterest, going back to our earlier point, some of the best things you can do for your skin are simply drinking plenty of water, eating healthy whole foods, using sunscreen products regularly, and stimulating blood flow and detoxification through exercise. I'm a huge fan of high quality cleanser and cream that you can find at the drugstore, at Target or Walmart, or even at Costco. Using it regularly day and night, and that's it. Very simple. I'm not going to go too deep into all the options and specifics for hundreds and hundreds of skincare rituals, but I will link to a wonderful article on 40 wedding beauty tips in the blog post for today's show where you can find lots more information on pre-wedding skincare if you're interested in learning about more. So continuing to move through our timeline, a quick note on hair. At about the six month before the wedding mark, plus or minus, again, I know some of us are engaged for 18 months, some of us are engaged for only six months, but at about six months, If you're considering a drastically new hair color or highlights or style, I would recommend diving into that about six months before the wedding. This leaves you plenty of time for adjustments if it's not quite what you expected and you need to make changes with your stylist. Now, of course, you'll do a hair color and or highlights touch up much closer to your actual wedding day and more to come on that a bit later in the show. Your hair grows about a half an inch per month, so keep that in mind before you go out and chop off 12 inches of length and try out a short haircut for the very first time in your life. This might not be the best time for that, so just something to keep in mind. You've got at six month mark, you've got about three inches of length to gain back, so just something to consider. Coming up after a quick break, we're going to keep flowing through your wedding beauty timeline. We'll dive deep into hair and makeup trials and tons more information on beauty items to check off your list in the final months, weeks, and days before your wedding. Convenience is number one on my list for success with healthy eating. So having kettlebell kitchen meals in my refrigerator to grab and go on busy days is a game changer. 
I love that all the Kettlebell Kitchen meals are free of dairy, soy, and artificial sweeteners and made from ingredients naturally free of gluten. And I especially love that I don't even have to think about what's for lunch. It is so convenient to hop online, view their menu, and select exactly what looks good to me. Cilantro lime beef sliders with butternut squash. Yes, please. With Kettlebell Kitchen, you can enjoy the nutrition you need without any of the hassle. Sign up for a plan or order a la carte. There's no long-term contract required. Your meals are delivered to your door twice a week for optimal freshness. You don't need to worry about sourcing ingredients, shopping, chopping, meal prep, nothing. Just heat, serve, and get the food you need for real, sustainable change. Feed the champion in you with Kettlebell Kitchen. Go to kettlebellkitchen.com and enter code WEDDING for $25 off each of your first two orders for new customers. That's $25 off each of your first two orders at kettlebellkitchen.com code WEDDING. I fancy myself a minimalist and you'll often hear me say things like, the simpler the better, less is more. This goes for literally everything in my life from wedding plans to beauty products like my deodorant. This is why I love Native, where they're creating safe, simple, and effective products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance. Less is more with Native. There are fewer, simpler ingredients so you know everything that's in your deodorant. And making the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant does not mean having to sacrifice on product performance. I use the coconut vanilla scent. It smells amazing, and it keeps me feeling fresh all day long. Not to mention knowing that I'm using a product that's aluminum-free, safe, and effective. Priceless. Best of all, there's absolutely no risk to try. You'll enjoy free returns and exchanges in the USA. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code WEDDING during checkout. That's 20% off your first purchase when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code WEDDING during checkout. If you're dreaming of a unique and unforgettable honeymoon and wanting some free help with the planning, booking, and details, Susan's Travel Services is the perfect solution for you. A lot of couples are concerned that working with a travel agent is one more expense to pay, and that's simply not true. In fact, working with Susan to plan your exotic honeymoon is totally free and will likely save you a ton of time and money over researching and booking things on your own. Susan and her team specialize in travel around the world and will find you the best deals on all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, exotic cruises, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or the African safari you've always dreamed of. Don't get overwhelmed with the millions of places and options online. Get some free help and rely on professional experience to make sure that you get exactly what you're looking for in your dream honeymoon. Email Susan and tell her you heard this ad and get $50 off your honeymoon. Tell a friend and get a $50 referral fee if they mention your name at the time of booking. Email Susan at Susan'sTravelServices.com for free honeymoon planning services and get $50 off when you book with Susan and her team. Okay, we're back. Let's pick this show up with a detailed discussion on your hair and makeup trials and your beauty timeline in the last couple of months and weeks before the big day. First thing to note here. You should absolutely 100% have your dress and any veils or hair pieces picked out before committing to a wedding day hairstyle. The neckline of your dress, the back line of it, and of course, anything else that's going in your hair will be really influential on the hairdo that you end up going with. This is a good place to share with you that I'm a very casual person in terms of hair and makeup. 
So in other words, I <laughs> style my hair maybe once a week, maybe, and that's probably a generous estimate. And I very seldomly wear makeup unless I'm going out and doing something really specific where I'm trying to look nice. On most days, you'll find me with my hair up in a bun and zero makeup. So that's where I'm coming from in this show. <laughs> We're going to go over all of your wedding day hair and makeup options in detail here in the second half of the show. And I want to say right at the beginning that doing your own hair and makeup for your wedding is a perfectly great alternative to the time and expense of having it done professionally. I am a huge believer in looking like an enhanced version of you on your wedding day. You shouldn't walk down the aisle and have your partner seeing you for the first time and having to do a triple take because they've never seen you wearing so much makeup in your entire relationship. So you want to look like you, just enhanced you. So if you're not someone who wears a ton of makeup and you keep a really casual routine with your hair, then really heavy, really thick professional makeup and an elaborate hairstyle can feel really unnatural and uncomfortable. And we don't want to go too overboard and have you feeling weird in your own skin on the wedding day. So that's why it is so important that we practice in the months ahead so that you're not caught off guard hours before your wedding when there's no time left to make adjustments. So if you're unsure about having hair and makeup done by a pro, I will say that I think it's worth it to pay for a trial, see what you think, and then go from there. Either way, whether you plan to go with professionally styled hair and makeup, or if you're sure that you want to do it on your own with your bridesmaids, your friends, and your family, trial runs, test runs should start to happen about three months before your wedding date. I would suggest booking an appointment at your favorite salon. If you don't have one or if you've never had professional makeup done or hair done, as I think applies to many of us, ask your friends and your family for referrals if necessary or go online and look around, see what's available in your area. You should go into your hair and makeup trial with a semi-clear version or vision, excuse me, of what you want and what you absolutely don't want. So very important to go in with an idea of what you like and an idea of what you don't like. Pictures and guidelines and very specific things to share are very, very helpful Things will go so much more smoothly if you come prepared with, again, photos and guidelines to share with your stylist of exactly what you have in mind. And if you don't know exactly what you have in mind, that is totally fine. I'm talking just a very general guideline of what you're thinking and what you definitely don't want. And that's going to make this process go much more smoothly. Now, of course, you can ask their professional opinion of what would best complement your skin and your hair, your face shape, your dress neckline, etc. Just don't go in cold without doing some research on what you're drawn to and what you absolutely do not want. I have firsthand experience in going into a hair trial with no idea of what I wanted. And that was a huge mistake. I went in and asked the stylist to try whatever she thought would be best. And <laughs> to make a very long story short, it was a complete waste of time, money, and effort for everybody involved. Also very important to note here, as you're going through any trial run or runs, you may do this more than once, definitely have a conversation with your stylist about how much time you need to allocate on your wedding day for hair and makeup. 
talk to them about exactly how many bridesmaids and flower girls and mothers of brides and grooms, etc. How many people need to be styled? How many stylists can show up on your wedding day to help out? And ask for all the details on how everyone needs to show up prepped and ready to go on the wedding day, morning or early afternoon, whatever your timeline dictates. And with that, let's circle back around and do a little bit more of a deeper conversation about doing your own hair and makeup with the help of your bridal party, your friends, and your loved ones. Now, if your mind is made up that you do want to do your hair and your makeup on your own, that is absolutely 100% fine. I'm in complete support of that. I did this for my own wedding. All of us kind of shared, took turns fixing each other up. It is still critically important that you practice multiple times in advance. No matter how comfortable you are doing your own hair or how certain you are that you want your makeup to look a certain way, absolutely do not show up on the wedding day morning doing that for the first time. You have to practice. It is so important. It's also really important as you're practicing and as you're getting more proficient and faster and getting better at doing the makeup and the hair, take note of how long it takes from start to finish to do both your hair and your makeup. And keep track of that for everyone who's going to be doing this on the wedding day. How many people are going to be in the room getting their hair and their makeup done by each other? And just be mindful of getting a really firm idea of how long that's going to take. It's going to be very, very important when you go to make your actual wedding day timeline. So browse around Pinterest for wedding day hair and makeup inspiration. If you're at a loss, you can find tons of ideas to kind of get you started and then put it on the calendar. Make solid plans to get together with all of your bridal party, all of your friends and family at least a few times in the coming months to practice together. Even if you aren't personally big into hair and makeup. I'm sure you have friends or family members who are, who are a little more proficient and can lend you some guidance and advice on what to do and what not to do. And if you're saving the money on having hair and makeup done professionally, it might be fun to go out and splurge on a few new products or a few new items like an eyeshadow palette, lipstick, really high quality waterproof mascara, more to come on that in just a minute, and then maybe some extra special salon hair products to help with the styling on the day of. And then last thing to note on hair and makeup trial runs, the perfect time to schedule these trials is before an event like your bridal shower, your bachelorette party, or maybe it's just a date night out with your partner. If you're already going to be all made up, you might as well take advantage and go out and do something fun. So three months in advance, you've got hair and makeup trials scheduled, whether that's with a professional or with your friends and family. As we move on, let's move closer to your wedding in the six to eight week before time frame. I've got a bunch of questions on microblading for eyebrows and eyelash extensions. Now, (laughs) I am by no means an expert in either of these areas, so I'll link to two great articles with lots of detailed information that you can find in today's show notes or at the blog post for today's show at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash beauty. And again, that's two articles on microblading for eyebrows and eyelash extensions. Moving right along, we find ourselves at one month before the wedding. This is when you would want to schedule any facial treatments that you want to have done. And then after that, plan to stay out of the sun for the next few weeks. I mentioned in the first half of today's show, I have an article with 40 wedding beauty tips, four zero, tons of good information. And the article goes pretty deep into skincare options. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on all the options for facials and treatments. Go check out the blog post for more information on that. 
Next item, teeth whitening. Now, your dentist can probably recommend a professional teeth whitening plan that they would do in office. These can span many treatments over the course of a few weeks. Sometimes it's something that they can do in the office within an hour. It just depends. So have a discussion with your dentist if you're uh, interested in that. You can also certainly do at-home whitening kits. They're available anywhere from Costco to Walmart to Target. They're pretty affordable. So if you want to do teeth whitening, about a month in advance is when you want to start getting those plans underway. Also, about a month out, if you plan to do any spray or self-tanning, I would definitely do a test run about a month in advance to be sure that you don't go overboard with coloring. The day or two after you test, try on your wedding dress to see the shade of your dress against the exact color of your skin. You might have in your mind that it's going to look one way against your ivory dress when in reality, it may look very different. Self-tanning is not an area to mess around with right before your wedding day, so be very, very thorough in practicing and knowing exactly how that's going to turn out for the wedding day itself. Very, very important. And now we move to two weeks before your wedding. This is the perfect time to go in and touch up your highlights and or your hair color and get your hair trimmed. Remember, this is not the time to do anything dramatic with your hair. This should simply be a touch up of what you tried out six or so months ago and what you know you're comfortable with in terms of your hairstyle. Two weeks ahead is also the perfect time for a check-in. If you're doing your own hair and makeup, we discussed that in great detail. Two weeks ahead of time, make sure you're good to go with a hair style. You're good to go with your makeup plan and you have all the products that you're going to need on hand. And maybe you even sneak in one last practice run. Just take the time to be deliberate. Make sure you have everything you need. The last couple of days before your wedding are not the time when you want to be out running last minute errands like desperately searching for waterproof mascara that's going to work. That's not an item you need to be stressed out with. So two weeks ahead of time, make sure you have everything you're going to need for your hair and your makeup. And one week ahead of the wedding, this is when you'll want to take care of any waxing. So eyebrows, lip, bikini, etc. Make sure you get all that taken care of at least a week ahead of time. Two days before your wedding. You have experimented extensively with self-tanner and or spray tanning. Two days before is when you want to go have that final application done. Again, I cannot stress enough, self-tanning and spray tanning is not something that I take lightly. It's like a loaded weapon right before the wedding day. So use a lot of caution with that and know exactly what you're getting into. Okay, and here we are. It's the day before your wedding. This is when you want to have an appointment to get your nails done. That should not happen on your wedding day. It's way too time consuming, and it's definitely much more effective to have that taken care of the day before. The day before, or maybe even two days before, depending on your hair type and your personal preference, but I would plan to wash your hair for the last time. You want to give your hair at least a day to rest and be dry and have your natural oils kind of redistribute before your wedding day hairdo. And now here we are on the day of your wedding. Now, how long your hair and your makeup prep will take on the actual day depends on a ton of variables. I will post some sample timelines and some advice in the blog post for today's show, weddingplanningpodcast.co slash beauty. In a nutshell, you'll want to use the trial runs that we reviewed earlier in the show as hands-on research for exactly how long everything is going to take. So did your hair take an hour? 
Maybe it even took two hours from start to finish. How many bridesmaids are also getting their hair done and their makeup done? Talk to your stylist during the trials and get all the information you possibly can so that you can make an accurate schedule for your wedding day. And we're going to wrap up today's show with your questions on wedding day beauty. I worked a lot of them into the actual show itself, and here are some that we haven't touched on yet. A listener writes, I don't usually wear much makeup. Any suggestions on light makeup that looks natural? Yes. Browse Pinterest for natural wedding day makeup. Click through to any articles and get specific product listings. And then experiment. Practice, practice, practice. You might want to recruit help from a close friend or family member who's really comfortable applying makeup and just get in there, get your hands dirty, literally, and practice until you find a look that feels really natural and really comfortable. Next question Should you use your own makeup products or the professionals? This is totally up to you. Like we discussed earlier, I do think a trial is totally worth it just to see what you think. And I would recommend that you bring your own favorite makeup products to your trial and then have a conversation with your stylist about what your options are. You might feel more comfortable using your own base makeup and foundation, but talk to your stylist. We're talking about the wedding day, which is a really long time, and you're going to want your makeup to be really well set and really durable to get you through that entire day. So your everyday products might not be appropriate, but it's important to talk to your stylist and see what they think based on what you're used to using. Next question, and this is a really important one, how to get my makeup cry-proof. If you're having your makeup done professionally, this will be second nature for any bridal stylist. If you're doing your makeup on your own, then I would really recommend that you invest in a couple of waterproof mascara options and experiment in the weeks ahead to find out what works best for you. What I love may not work with your skin and your chemistry and vice versa. Makeup is a topic that is definitely not one size fits all, which is why lots and lots of trials and practice is so very important. And then last piece of advice there, make sure that you have a really soft, really gentle handkerchief or tissues at hand, on the ready, at all all times throughout the wedding day, whether this means wrapping it around your bouquet or stashing it in your cleavage or having someone close to you, having it on hand and ready to use at all times. The easiest way to prevent makeup smudges is to catch those tears as they're coming out with that soft handkerchief or soft tissues. Okay, and last question to bring us full circle and kind of wrap up this whole conversation. Who should determine the timeline of when we start getting ready? Again, I'll put up some samples in today's blog post, but your wedding day beauty timeline will depend largely on what time your ceremony starts, when you're having photos done, how many people are in the wedding party and need to be made up, just to name a few things. Every wedding day and every scenario is so different and it's impossible to generalize a one-size-fits-all timeline. If you're working with a professional wedding planner or a day of coordinator, your day of timeline is a conversation that you'll want to have in detail with them and also involve any hair and makeup stylists that you're going to be working with on the day of to make sure that you're all on the same page about exactly how much time you have to work with on the day. Now, if you're managing your hair and your makeup on your own, and maybe you're using help from a close friend or family member for the day of coordination and logistics, use our conversations from today to sketch out everything that needs to take place with regards to hair and makeup, what time frame you're working with, so what time are you waking up and what time is your ceremony starting, and then build your timeline from there. I really hope you found today's show helpful. 
much more to come on wedding timelines. Like I mentioned at the beginning, there are so many more angles that we can approach this topic. So many other things to explore. I had a blast hearing from you and creating today's show. Be sure to visit the full blog post for links and resources that we reviewed today at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash beauty. And thank you again so much for being in touch with your new show topic ideas and your questions on wedding day health and beauty. If you have any questions about today's show, you're always welcome to send me a DM on Instagram. You can find me at wedding planning podcast, or you can send a good old fashioned email by visiting wedding planning podcast.co slash contact. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For details on any links and resources mentioned in today's show, be sure to take a peek at the show notes on your mobile device. You can also head over to weddingplanningpodcast.co for a complete library of past episodes and to sign up for weekly show notes and resources delivered straight to you via email. Until next time, have a great day, happy planning, and I can't wait to chat again soon. Cheers. Cheers.